Well, earlier I spoke to Mark Lowcock, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs of the United Nations. He joined us from New York. Well, it's an extremely alarming situation. As you say, the fighting there started with this uh, operation the government described as a law enforcement operation in early November. And while the government have got some places <clears throat> back under their control, there's large swathes of Tigray with many, many people um, living there, which are basically still not accessible, certainly to aid agencies. And hundreds of thousands of people, if not more, have had no access to food or electricity or telecommunications or water or health services for a long time now. So we're very, very worried about the situation. There have been uh, many worrying reports coming out of the area of uh, rapes, of killing, uh, also of killing livestock and burning crops. I mean, what do you make of the reports that you've been hearing? And do you think that potentially it could amount to war crimes? Well, there have been multiple allegations of atrocities of many different sorts, actually, killings and rapes and other um, sexual crimes against um, women and teenage girls. It is very alarming. But the wider situation is just as alarming. Risk of um, acute malnutrition, starvation, people dying because they don't have access to basic health services, the appearance of cholera and other diseases that can't be dealt with because there's no clean water or um, immunization campaigns. The fact that large numbers of people have run away from their homes because they're afraid of the men with the guns and are camped out in some field or some unsafe place with no shelter or any other food or supplies. It's a very worrying situation. We've been able to get little bits of aid, a few consignments and trucks in here and there, but we need much better access. And we would appreciate it if the government would provide essentially blanket access to, um, you know, to the regular aid agencies, the UN, the Red Cross and others. And then if we can negotiate the same thing with uh, the people who are in control of places the government aren't in control of. Uh, some people are trying to exert pressure on the government. The EU, for example, has suspended more than $100 million of budget support until aid agencies are given access to Tigray. Do you think that that is the right approach? And if not, what steps do you think should be taken by parts of the international community to try to solve the situation? Well, I think two things need to happen. The first is access, which we've just talked about. And the second is there is a need for a some kind of reconciliation process between the government and um, all the communities in Tigray. And um, that's what's needed to, to um, happen in order to bring the overall situation under control. I think ultimately what's needed is cooperation and agreement um, to move in that direction. But it is the case, of course, that many countries have been generous providers of assistance to Ethiopia over many years, not least the EU, also um, the UK and the US. And I do understand why those countries have got concerns and why they would like the Ethiopian authorities to take different measures as a means of providing confidence that other forms of cooperation can safely continue. Do you worry that this could escalate into a regional conflict? Because we're seeing hundreds of thousands of refugees heading to uh, Sudan. There is, of course, a, an issue potentially with neighbours to the east. Do you worry about that? I'm extremely worried about that. But I have another worry as well, which is that Ethiopia has multiple parts to its country, multiple ethnic groups. There are other parts of the country where clashes have been occurring and growing. So this is a situation which has the potential to affect the whole of Ethiopia, as well as the wider neighbourhood. Ethiopia has been a bulwark of stability. It's been an amazing story of development progress over the last 30 years. And it's tragic to see all that now being put at risk, which is why the sooner people can get round the table and find a negotiated way forward, the better for everybody, the Tigrayans, the rest of Ethiopia and the wider region.